Hello everyone, it's Karen. I'm really glad you're here because today I am playing around with this uh, card style. It's a double slider card. Now, I do have the die from Lawn Fawn, but it makes a very small uh, double slider. It's not even this one, it's smaller than this. But I have this new U die from Penny Black and I really wanted to use that. So I just started playing with my rectangle dies and I came up with um, a template for a card that is, it ends up being five and a half inches wide by four inches tall. Now this is my template if you want to take a screenshot or stop and write that down. But what I've done is I've cut two pieces of card that are five and a half by four and a quarter inches and two that are four and three quarters by three and a half inches. These larger ones here, the five and a half by four, by four and a quarter, sorry, uh, will be the front and the back. And you can see I'm just scoring it there a quarter of an inch in, so it ends up being four inches tall, this card. And I'm folding those uh, fold lines backwards and down, and I'm putting double-sided tape along those. Now these will be the front and the back of the card. So both of them will get the tape on them. Here I have now colored the front one or just done some ink blending and I've also done those two smaller pieces on which will come out on either side and I just tried to center them and roughly keep that green and blue line straight across. Okay to put the front and the back together I am removing the release paper on the one uh, piece of double sided tape on the back and I'm butting it up with the front and just pushing that down. And so that should give you a nice seam there. So you can see how that folds out. Now I wanted some finger holds, so I'm just using a small circular die and just putting it in. I've marked where the center is on both sides of this, and I just cut small notches out. Okay, now this is the inside mechanism piece. It is five and a quarter inches by four inches wide. And I am marking in at the top and the bottom a quarter of an inch in on both sides of this card. And then I will just use my T ruler and draw a line. Just, it doesn't have to go all the way across. You can, because this won't show, so whatever works. I just did the, the, the end pieces. And I did this on both the top and the bottom. And then once I had this uh, quarter of an inch line marked out, I rotated it and I marked across 6 sixteenths of an inch. Now. That's the measurement that I used. I'm not sure if it would matter too much if you went, you know, a bit more than that or a bit less than that, but that is what I did and it worked. So I'm just giving you what I did. <laughs> so six sixteenths of a cross and then I drew a line straight down from where that quarter of an inch line was down to the bottom quarter of an inch line. And that is going to give you the area that you have to remove. So you want to, it ends up looking a bit like a weird fat eye, this piece of card. So you can see here, I'm cutting along the lines and straight down this one. And then once that's cut out, I cut it out as well from the other side. And that's what gives you that weird eye shape, basically. So I erased the lines, you don't have to, because none of this shows. But what you do need is some plastic. And now I use this Ziploc bag because it's a much wider <laughs> card than I normally would use. So it has to be something that will fit right across and overlap just slightly. So the Ziploc bag worked perfectly and I just cut it down to be three and a half inches because that's the width between those notched ends. So three and a half inches uh, and then I just cut this bag in half. So I ended up having two of these. So you could make a second card with this plastic. So don't, don't throw it out if you're planning on making more. So I've, I'm putting a piece of double-sided adhesive now at the end. Now I left this in to show you because I realized when I pulled that off that I had some sticking out and you definitely don't want that because that will stick the whole plastic down to that uh, mechanism and it won't move. So I have now wrapped that plastic around to the back of this mechanism and I am, I've got it lined up, that strip of uh, double-sided tape is lined up at the edge. You don't want this to be too tight that it won't move, but you also don't want it super loose. So I'm just gently lifting this up and over 
and you can see that can really move easily now and you definitely want it to do that if if you have a hard time moving it you're probably it's probably too tight so I just trimmed off the excess there and that's that whole mechanism now I'm putting some double-sided tape along that one quarter of an inch um, edge and then I flip it over and put it on the other side as well so both and both top and bottom have got double-sided adhesive on just on the opposite sides okay now on my extendable pieces I've put some quarter of an inch tape on one of them it has to go on the front and the other it goes on the back and that's because these will go on either side of that mechanism so to attach them I've got my mechanism with the seam lined up to the right and I've removed the release paper on that tape on the on the left hand extendable edge and I'm just centering it between those notches just so that the tape um, attaches on to where the mechanism is and the same with this side I'm just putting it so it goes just over that center eye and then you can pull these in and out and that's how it works okay here I'm removing the release paper on the front now I want you to notice that I've got the extendable ends tucked in so that they're fairly flush with the um, the whole mechanism part and I'm just folding this down that is the front side of the card that is face down on my on my mat and I'm attaching this right down onto that now I remove the release paper on this mechanism and then fold the front flap down over it so now that mechanism is wedged right inside this and it can't move so now I'm going to remove the release paper on the back flap of the front and just fold the back half of the card right up and seal everything in there just press it firmly and then you'll see that the mechanism will slide in and out now you could leave it like this and just use those finger grips there but I prefer to put a tab just to extend that uh, pull mechanism a little bit so here's what I do on a scrap piece of cardstock I'm just measuring that's the same die I used for those thumb grips and I just cut a piece that was as wide as that and I'm drawing uh, that semicircle. I'm creasing it now at 5 8 of an inch in and uh, folding it and burnishing it you could die cut this but I just found that was just such a teeny tiny <laughs> little little semicircle to try and you know position on my die cutting machine that it just seemed easier to cut it by hand so now I've got those extendable tabs tucked right in and I am marking with the pencil where the notches are then I open it up and I am gluing those tabs in place now I have inked them up with the same color of ink just on the front and I'm just gluing those down now where the pencil marks were flipping it over and gluing the back down in place as well so that just gives you a little bit more to grip onto when you want to pull those mechanisms out <clears throat> now I stamped the pull on I think that was an MFT stamp that I used and here I've um, added on all the decorations these are all from craft consortium it's the let spring begin collection it's adorable now you could leave that and just write on the back but it won't stand up so here I've cut a five and a half by eight inch piece of cardstock folded it in half and I'm just gluing it and I'm going to stick that onto the back of the card so that will give you somewhere to write your message, but also it does allow the card to stand up, which I think is kind of nice. So there it is. Really fun, these cards, to have that extendable part. Okay, this is the original Lawn Fawn die set that I have, and it's quite small. This is how big it is on a regular A2 size card, so it's definitely smaller than that. This was the one I was playing with at the beginning of the video and I had just been trying different sizes. And so the last one is the one I've just shown you. So I do think if you want different sizes, just play around with this a little bit. The whole technique of that mechanism is gonna be the same. You just want to have them proportionally the same size so that the, the wings on these will fit inside that eye-shaped mechanism. 
So I hope that's given you some ideas, you guys. Uh, thanks for joining me once again, and I hope to see you again next time. Have a great day.